the fuel pump I bought for this 81 Corvette came from AutoZone. This rod goes on top of the uh, fuel pump arm and goes up to the camshaft. Now, I had to push this rod back out of my way to put my camshaft in and it just fell out onto the ground. So if that happens to you, you'll find the right spot for it. It slides right up in there. It's a tight fit in the hole that it goes in. So if, uh, if you can tell it's inside of another pipe feel like it's got a good snug fit going up in there you should have it in the right spot so what they gave me in the kit was a gasket that fits here which is fine for sealing the pump to this plate I'm good with that and I'll put that on the outside of the plate this gasket it's not going to do me any good on the back side of this plate because I need gasket that goes all the way down and around these holes and back up again. If I put it on there and then I put the plate on the block, it's going to be uh, either cocked or there's just going to be a gap below the bottom. Now, if you can see, this hole down here. That gasket's just not going to work for the block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put sealant all the way around that plate, like a form of gasket. I hope that seals it up. Now, make sure that you follow the directions that come with your fuel pump and how this lever needs to go underneath that arm I showed you earlier, if that's the style that you have. If it gets caught on top of that arm, you can mess up the pump and maybe even the camshaft. But there are installation instructions with the kit. Like I said, make sure you follow them. So there was no way I was gonna be able to set this phone up and you're gonna be able to see what I was doing with two hands down here but I got the rod in there that I showed you earlier and I did my best to make sure that the pump arm was underneath the rod and I put this upper bolt in right here through the gaskets in the plate and using one hand I pushed the fuel pump up into the block and with my right hand I threaded got this bolt started I took my wrench I held the pumping air as close to where it should have been as I could, and I brought this bolt on in some. Then I got the other bolt on the other side of the pump. I got it started in the hole as far as I could get it with my fingers, right? Then I started working them both. This one from over here a little bit with the socket and ratchet. And then behind the air conditioner down here, with the socket and ratchet on the other bolt. So I got them close to snug. And then I put the two bolts in at the bottom of the plate. I got this one in, snugged it up a little bit, and I had to crawl underneath the car in order to put this lower plate bolt in. This one right here, the lower one. I had to do the other side from underneath the car. Went ahead and tightened it up, came back out, tightened the rest of them up, went over all of them one good time. Um, I'm not gonna give you the torque, you have to look that up. I just tightened mine up, mill right tight. One more thing I wanna add about the fuel pump. When you disconnect the original fuel pump, the larger line, um, that's your feed line or your inlet, whatever you want to call it. When you unhook this line, gas is just going to pour out of it like it's going to gravity feed. So what I've got here is a kind of rubber cap that you might use to plug a vacuum leak or something. That's what I've got over the top of it. So I'll hook this hose up 
when I get ready to hook this hose up here, I'll already have the clamp on the hose and be ready to catch some gas because it's definitely going to flow out of there. Okay, as you probably realize, in order to get the timing cover off, I had to break the oil pan loose. Now, I don't think this oil pan had ever been broken loose before, so when I pulled the timing cover off, this part of the four-piece gasket came off with the timing cover. Um, now, I had dropped this down enough to get that timing cover out from under there that I was worried about it leaking. So I went ahead and pulled the pan, cleaned it up, and the gasket's just laying in. It's ready to go. This gasket I bought is a one piece. It doesn't require any gasket cement. It is a Victor Rhines. Uh, part number for it. Okay. Um, I don't remember who I ordered it from. But anyway, to get the oil pan out from under the car, I first took this nut off, cotter pin and nut, and this cotter pin and nut try and pull this steering assembly down enough to clear the pan to get it out of here. But it didn't work. I couldn't separate this joint right here. I could not get this piece off, even with my tuning fork driving it in here. I didn't want to break it, so I didn't drive it too hard. The answer ended up being unbolting this arm from the frame. Obviously, you can see it's got two bolt holes, bolts right to the side of the frame. One's a through bolt that comes from out here, and one's just up on top of the frame. So I ended up undoing that part of the steering to get this to drop down low enough to get the pan out. Right now I'm in the process of cleaning the gasket off all the way around the outside, and man, it's hard as a rock, and it's stuck like I don't know what. So I'm going to be a couple hours cleaning the gasket off of there. Okay, you're looking at the oil pan. That has finally been bolted back in. The steering assembly has been put back together. The dust cover has been put back on over the flywheel. The heater hoses have been bolted back on and the fuel lines have been bolted to the fuel pump. I have spent about seven hours underneath the car today and I'm finally going to take it down off the jack stands. Now I'm ready to take the lash out of my valves. This is my number one. This is the exhaust. This is the inlet or intake. You can tell by the intake holes right here next to it. This will be the intake on number three and the exhaust. Same on this side. You can see the exhaust header running straight into the exhaust valve. The inlet or intake is right in front of the intake valve. So I want to turn the crankshaft bolt until the exhaust valve rises up out of there and goes back down again. All right, so I brought number one up top dead center, which allowed me to set the lash on number six. After one is eight, I brought cylinder eight up top dead center and was able to adjust cylinder five, take the lash out of cylinder five. One, eight, four, was the next one I brought top dead center on compression stroke, which allowed me to take the lash out of cylinder seven. Okay. 
Now, and because I got the lash out, means that this won't go up and down very easily. Now, I can still push the lifter down a little bit, but I'm not worried about the side to side. I can still rock this arm around a little bit, and that's all right. That doesn't tell me anything. It doesn't mean anything. Um, anyway, 1843 is the cylinder I need to bring top dead center next. So that I can adjust cylinder number two. All right. So the exhaust is up because that's the order I'm in. When it goes down and the intake comes up, I know I'm ready. I'm gonna get my wrench over here on my crankshaft. And we'll watch for the exhaust to go down and slowly going down. Okay, we're there. I don't know if you could see it, but I could barely see this one move. So they're about the same height. And my firing order is 1843. Three. And three's where I'm at, right? One, three, five, seven. So 1843, three's at top bed center compression stroke, which means cylinder number two is ready for me to take the lash out. And that is, again, Because now cylinder two is on the flat spot of the cam. And I need to take that looseness out of it. So you can either lift up on the back of this and tighten it down, or you can pick up on the rod, on the push rod, until you get the slackness out. So I always pick up on the rod. While I'm tightening the nut, I'll be picking up on the rod until all the slack's gone. And then I'm gonna turn it a half a turn. I'll do the same thing with this one. All right, I've finished adjusting all the valves. I'll put some desiccate cement around the uh, intake and water jets in the heads along the front and back of the block put the gaskets on put some gasket sealer around the intake and the water ports the back ones don't really get uh, water going through them because they're they are shut off on the intake of uh, Clean the intake, scrape a little gunk off of it, wash it down with brake cleaner. It's ready to go. Just got the gasket cement sitting here for a minute. I'm about to put it on. Okay, the intake's in place. It's time to start putting the bolts in. I want to put A little bit of gasket sealant on these bolts. So I don't have no seepage. The Edelbrock website has 
this is an Edelbrock intake, says to torque these bolts to 12 to 15 foot pounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then go back and torque them to 25 foot pounds. Torquing from the center and then to the outside. All right, so as you know, I torqued the intake down and I started by putting the carburetor back on it, hooking up vacuum hoses, etc., etc. Now I left the engine top dead center, number one compression. And right now I'm trying to set the distributor. And I want to end up with this button pointing over here at number one. So I'm picking it up, turning it a little bit, setting it down in there, trying to get it to end up pointing at number one. That kind of looks like it's pointing at number one, but it's not sitting all the way down. If you notice, there's a tiny bit of gap underneath it. It's just not all the way down. It's about a quarter inch in the air. So I think what I need to do is pull it back out. And turn the oil pump a little bit more. Let's see if I can shine my light down in there. Okay, the, the groove in the oil point port looks like it's pointing over at number two. So I need to turn it with a long screwdriver so that it's facing my number one cylinder. All right, I got the distributor to go all the way down. The button's pointing at the number one plug wire. So we're good for now. <laughs> 